When and how did we get to this point where the whiniest, most sensitive, most insecure people involved with professional wrestling were not the fans, but the wrestlers? Because that is absolutely true now. And it's been that way for quite some time. Sure, you'll have those counterculture nerds that'll try to sit there and take sides with the wrestlers, sucking up to them like it fucking matters. Newsflash, ding dong, dumb dicks, they don't like you either. But it's so obvious and so true that as much as the fans used to be the biggest whiny babies, it's now the wrestlers. And Monday night, you got a perfect example of this again. You got an elimination four-way women's number one contenders match. That goes on way too goddamn long. It's way too damn bad. And the crowd resents it to the point where they're chanting, this is awful, this is awful. So, of course, Alexa Bliss, being a wrestler, therefore being the most insecure and sensitive baby, decides to go to Twitter and respond with, among other things, Monday night, just disrespectful. And then later on expounds upon that by saying fans surely can boo and they can cheer, but they don't have the right to be disrespectful. And I'm paraphrasing here, but you get the goddamn point. <laughs> like, seriously. And if you're going to sit there and try to defend her by saying she was trying to do it in character, she was trying to be some type of whiny heel. No, she wasn't. And you know better than that. Accept it. Because if you're doing something like that in character, trying to be the villain you're supposed to be, then you embrace it and you own it. And you say, how dare those fucking inbred fans, something to that effect, boo the goddess. Just disrespectful. You see how different that sounds? Now that sounds like something a villain would say. That sounds like something a heel would say. That sounds like something you would say when you're trying to embrace the hate and by God, draw some freaking money with it. But we've gotten way past that point with professional wrestling. And before you just go there and automatically blame millennials and say this is the PC culture and every base you goddamn sensitive. There's an element of that that's true. But don't blame that generation. Blame the generations that raised them and made them that fucking way. They only know what they were enabled to do. They only know what they were given the entitlement to do. Everybody's got to have fucking feelings about everything. Everybody's got to get caught up in their own bullshit. You know, Alexa, here's the thing. You can't sit there and pick and choose what reactions you want the fans to give. I know WWE always talks out of both sides of their ass here where they say, we're in the reaction business and we love when the crowd reacts. Boo or cheer, it doesn't matter. But if you boo the wrong guy or you chant something at the wrong guy, then they're just going to edit it out anyways. They proclaim that they love the freedom of expression that they give the fans, but if you wear a Bullet Club shirt, let's say, they're going to ask you to turn it inside out or kick you out of the building. So I kind of understand where Alexa is coming from here and that the environment that she's in is incredibly sensitive in and of itself. And the most sensitive, insecure person in professional wrestling today, fan or otherwise, is Vincent K. McMahon, and it's not even close. You're the established machine. Why in the hell would you care if some nerd sits there and wears a Bullet Club shirt, for example? Who fucking cares? They boo your top guy, Roman Reigns. Don't edit it out. You did it for years with Cena. You should be confident and secure enough in yourself that you're either A, doing the right thing, or B, you can acknowledge you're doing the wrong thing. You do something, either make it right or do something different. But no, instead, we got wrestlers tweeting because the fans sat there they didn't say, you're a slut, you're a whore, or anything that you could really say crosses the boundaries and truly becomes disrespectful. They said the match was awful by saying this is awful. And you know what? Those people sat there and paid their money, big money, to go watch that crap. If that's what they want to chant, they're fucking entitled to do so. And Alexa Bliss, instead of blaming the people and blaming their champ, how about you blame yourself, the others involved, Finley or whoever the fuck was the agent for this match, and make the shit better? Nobody asked for a 20-plus minute snooze fest. You want to sit there and complain about it. How about we complain about the fact that you sit out large portions of the match and when you do, you do some stupid ass rust holes. In the business world, you're taught that constructive criticism and feedback are the keys to your continual career growth and success. Take the fan's reaction as constructive criticism. Feedback. Take ownership of it and say, you know what? You deserve better. We could do better. And by God, we're going to do better. And then figure out how the hell you're going to do better.
sitting there whining about the fans being disrespectful when all they did was do a chant that was, this is awful, when it fucking deserved it and was merited is ridiculous. And this whole notion now that we've gotten into that everything has to be equal, okay? Everything has to be equal. You don't see Alexa Bliss complaining when a guy like Roman Reigns is supposed to be a hero and he's getting booed out of the fucking building or John Cena or any other number of baby faces that the fans resent. You can't sit there and sit on your hands and fucking be quiet when it's happening to them, but all of a sudden now when it happens to you, when it's merited and deserved, you can't sit there and go, <laughs> like embrace it. It's amazing in this world. The fewer Fs you give, the happier you truly are. If you're going to sit there and be bothered every time the crowd doesn't react exactly the way you feel like they should, or that you feel like you deserve for them to react, or you feel like you're entitled for them to give you in terms of response, you got problems here. Like Alexa, you get paid a lot of money to go wrestle a few times a week. You got a platform to be on TV every week, which could someday translate into movie deals, TV roles, and so forth. What the fuck are you complaining about? Like seriously, if I'm a wrestler right there, and you've got 15,000 people chanting, this is awful, this is awful. Either A, I don't give a fuck because I'm going to do my job. Or B, I'm going to take that feedback and learn from it and get better. I'm not going to sit there and go to social media and bitch about it. Not like a heel trying to get heat, but like a whiny, petulant, little fucking bratty mark. What the hell happened to wrestling? And everybody gets so damn sensitive, so goddamn insecure. And taking no responsibility for any action. I know in part this is a learned behavior from Vince McMahon. But damn it all. Be better than that. Rise above it, if you will. And just get better. You don't want fans chanting, this is awful. Then don't do things that can elicit that type of fucking reaction. Don't go to Twitter and whining about it. So that way you can get other fans that are kissing your ass because they think you're actually going to like them. When the truth is you're going to fucking care about them one way or another. They sit there and give you support like, yeah, they are waiting to go to the next year. Yeah, we're so disrespectful. Or they do stuff like that to Roman Reigns and other people. Crickets, crickets. Hands below ass. Hands below ass. I mean, god damn, man. Can everybody just act like adults here? Take some responsibility and grow the fuck up. I mean, when I do this crappy ass show. People got feedback for it. They got feedback for it. It's not always valid. And other times it is. I'm going to look at it, listen to it, and then decide what I'm going to implement. But I'm not just going to automatically sit there and say, if they give me negative feedback about something, that is automatically their fault because they could have a point. They might not have a point. They could just be saying it because they disagree with me. But the fact is, is I don't give a fuck. And the less you give a fuck, the better off it's going to be. And if anything, if I did give a fuck, I am just happy that they're giving me a reaction one way or another, similar to WWE today. But the difference is, is I'm not trying to sit there and edit out everybody's fucking comments and block every goddamn buddy under the fucking sun. And I most certainly am not going to go to social media and be like, it's so disrespectful what people say in the comments. Who cares? It's professional wrestling, man. It ain't life or death. And I know, Alexa, it's your life. It's your career. But don't get so caught up in it to where it bothers you to this degree. Take it, learn from it, and be better for it by God. Go into Twitter and whining about it afterwards, which was not in character. And anybody wants to come on here again and say that is stupid. It was not in character. It was an emotional reaction that made you look like a jackass. And believe me, if anybody knows how to make themselves look at it like a jackass, heh <laughs> it's this guy. So it takes one to know one. I can most certainly come across as a jackass. Alexa Bliss, that was a jackass thing to do. And you looked entitled. You looked spoiled. You looked insecure. It was a bad look. Don't blame the fans because they chanted, this is awful. Blame the company. Blame the agent of the match. Blame everybody else involved. And most importantly of all, God's sakes, blame yourself.